this. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Hi How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. Really good. You're, you're having yeah. a good time? Oh, yeah. Right on. Um, a lot of really good films. Yeah, so, loving the films. Mark, so I know obviously Mark Hensley, and who's who else is joining us here? Peggy, my wife. She's uh, the writer. Oh, oh wow! Okay, <laughs> right on. That's so great. This is an amazing uh, adaptation. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about what drew you to this specific story. Well, what drew me to this one was the fact that it was you know a very small cast. Um, I. I was in the process of doing a couple of short films in preparation for a feature. This was my third short film in a year. And um, I was looking for something good. So, and I had remembered about the Dollar Baby films that I'd read about years ago, long before I ever thought even of being a filmmaker. And so um, I started reading through his short stories and I came upon this one and right away I thought there were things in it that, um, I think you could act out that were kind of glossed over in, in the actual storyline, like the cops talking on the radio and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, what if we actually turn that into part of the movie? We're actually at the crime scene that they're talking about. Um, so, and I knew I was only going to have two days to shoot it because we're going to have a very small budget. And so I just wanted something that wasn't incredibly hard to, to shoot. And that, that was kind of the decision. That's amazing. Also, how long? It's a great story. It is a great story. Uh, how long you been making films for? Uh, about well, when I made that one, about a year. But I mean, so like, that was my first. Because you've Go been ahead. you've been in the business a while, though, yeah. Yes. Well, I'm a re-recording mixer, so I do final mix for TV shows and films and stuff like that. But this, uh, I didn't get into directing until about two years ago. Right on, right on. So, yeah. And so do you two often collaborate? Is that sort of? Actually, we do, because we've also uh, created a musical together based on music by The Clash called London Calling. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, and that's where I actually met most of the actors that you saw in the short as well. They were also in our musical. Um, and right now, Peg's working on a... Um, on another musical adaptation of a... Of a well, what is it? It's a, it was a, a movie written by Philippe Lossband in Paris called um, Irina Palm uh, about a woman who does prostitution to pay for her grandson's medical treatment. So I thought it would be a hilarious uh, musical. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> that Philippe, sounds hilarious. <laughs> I had a couple meetings with him, and he said, "Yeah, do it." And um, so, yeah. yeah. And actually, the the first short that um, I directed was also written by Peg. I had an idea to do a short film about basically about animal abuse, um, and so she, uh, I told her the idea, and she wrote it. And that's yeah, and that's what happened with this. Is I said, well this is kind of the idea I have and then gave it to her and she came back with the script. So <laughs> that's awesome. And how long has this one been released for? This is a year now. Okay. It's been out for a year. Yeah. So did you, have you actually been able to screen it places? It seems like we keep running into folks that haven't actually, like this is actually a premiere for them of sorts. Just, well, just online, just uh, online festivals here and there. We were in the Valley Film Festival. Oh yeah. We were in the Valley Film Festival last year as well. Yeah. Nice. Here, here in LA. And uh, so that was fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's great as, you know, beginning filmmakers to have access to write out, you know, right out of the, the gate, a good story. And I think that that's what's so great about the Stephen King thing, the thing is, is that that's what it's been for me. It's like, I already had ideas for two scripts, but I really wanted a third one and I wanted it to be good. And, you know, it's, it, as far as training material, I think, I think there, it's a fantastic opportunity because it gives your script writer that you want to work with um, a good starting point for a storyline. And for the filmmaker, it allows them to focus on really how do you want to present it. And because uh, there's so many ways you can present all these short stories. And I think it's, you know, it's just such a great thing. 
for sure. And I mean, King lends a certain pedigree to exactly. uh, to anything, yeah. right? So um, yeah. I'm sure we must have some Twitter questions. I've got two things from Dairy Public Radio because they're just, I don't know, they, they just want to be on with us. Um, but this is an actual question. We'll get to their haiku in a minute. But uh, they want to know, do you con- did you consider making it the time period it was written before deciding to modernize it? No, not at all. Right, right from the yeah. get-go, I was like, I want to make this current. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that for me the big thing was – making it about the reasons why behind the character, why he was doing these things as opposed to just following the story exactly. Because I think that that's the big thing about some of these stories. There's these hidden hidden things behind the why. And I think when you shoot them sometimes, some of that gets lost. So I really wanted to say, and that's why the whole twist at the end with the woman who actually turns out to be an older woman, it's not his girlfriend that is clearly dead now um it's every woman that he sees at a given point is his girlfriend and that's his psychosis and that's what i kind of wanted to show that's brilliant oh you want you want the haiku i mean everyone deserves their haiku <laughs> oh, yeah. tonight oh, yeah. these guys are like, <laughs> they're going to release a book a short poetry book after this i just why know not it. <laughs> Rose, red roses, so true. Hammer beats my heart for you. She's gone. Now I'm blue. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And obviously they gave you five out of five blue chambray shirts as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Should we talk about the fact that um, one, one thing I would like to say too is that, is is that for me, um, why I started doing this is that I think anyone who wants to become a filmmaker today, in my opinion, truly can be- become that because the entry level to become a filmmaker uh, is so low now. I, I, when I talk to people, I'm just like, you want to make a movie, go make it. Just go do it. You yeah. know, um, the first stuff you do is going to suck. Same thing, ha- you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. But eventually, just keep making films and... Yeah, anybody can do it as far as I'm concerned. For sure, for sure. And I mean, like you having sort of a, a longer career uh, as yeah. a, in film industry, um, I mean, can you talk to us a little bit? I, I hear that you've had brushes with Emmys, yes? Is this... Uh... Yeah, well, I, I've been nominated for three Emmys for sound, uh, and I won an Emmy two years ago, and I think it was for Genius uh, Picasso. Um. And I do, I do think to an extent, my advantage is that I'm watching really well-made stuff every day, nine hours a day. And I think for myself as, as a director, as well as an editor, because I, I edit all my own stuff as well, um, I, you know, I, you learn to look at things differently. You just, it's one of those things that you don't really notice, but I noticed once I started making films, how much my... Uh, time on the dub stage has helped me like really a lot. That's interesting. That's awesome. Who's this here uh, joining us? That's one of our four dogs. That's four dogs. Well. <laughs> one of our four rescues. <laughs> cool. On being part of this. Yes. <laughs> right on. So what's next on the slate for you then? What's the next upcoming project? Well, next is actually the film that led me to do all these short films, which is, um, it's kind of a racy rom-com called The Christmas Present. Um, I actually built the main set in my garage. And we've been waiting for a year to start filming because of COVID. It's about a man who hires himself a prostitute for Christmas. And what we get to see is what his fantasy that the prostitute should be versus the reality that shows up. <laughs> and we go between those two different worlds. And it's from a play um, by my friend Guy Picot, who's actually also in The Man Who Left Flowers. He's the British uh, cop, the okay, cop yeah. with the British accent. And he had asked me if we could film one of the performances when I produced a run of his Christmas story uh, two years uh, last year. 
And I just thought, well, why don't we just film it? It's, it's a very small cast. It's mostly one location. And that's next, but also we're going to be working on getting um, the musical that she's working on right now on stage next year as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of musicals, there is a really fantastic question from Twitter. Um, this is from Jamie and Fuego. Okay, so with some additional insight about your other talents, what Steve, <laughs> what Stephen King story would you want to turn into a musical? Oh. That's a great Ooh, question. Yeah. That is a, a great question. question. Yeah. Exactly. Mile 81? Mile 81. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be fun. Yeah. A car that eats people? How fun <laughs> would that be? <laughs> be like Little Shop of Horrors, but with a steam. Oh, dude. Exactly, right? <laughs> that would be so amazing. So amazing. Already right in the soundtrack yeah. in her head. Right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. have another one if I can ask. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Twitter's got some questions. This is from Victoria 2004 How does it feel to write a script based on someone as big as Stephen King? Amazing. Uh, scary, just too, because <laughs> you don't want to screw it up. But um, yeah, it was a, it was amazing. You certainly have, um, you know, great. Uh, Bones yeah. to jump off of. So, yeah, it was fantastic. I do it again at the drop of a hat. Well, so, we've got the musical now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you got the musical now. So, what if what if it was just straight, no musical? What like if, if you could choose any Stephen King? I would King. still like to do Mile Mile Eighty One. Yeah. Still same thing, you know, eh? Yeah. Yeah, there's something about it that visually just really appeals to me, and even though it's a short story. You know, I think uh, it could be worked into a pretty cool feature length movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's a very interesting story and I, I think it's great. So given your specific lens, right? Like, so, I mean, and your, mm -hmm. and your career as like, you've, you've won an Emmy and everything like that. What do you, what is the best Stephen King in that respect in movie? What like what movie did you watch and you're like, oh my god, that is absolutely brilliant. Well, yeah, I, there's a couple. Well, there's a couple. I, I do have to say, I think especially the first uh, episode of the new It film, I think was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty brilliant. But I then do. the non-horror ones too, like yeah, the the, Oh my god, Blade yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's just so many. Yeah. How can you pick this one? You know, it, it's funny too because I love Silver Bullet. Too, just watched oh yeah. That the other day. But I remember when I first Classic. went to watch um, the Green Mile. Uh, no, not Green Mile. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. I had no idea that that was a Stephen King movie. It's just so brilliant. It's not because it's not horror, but still it has just that level of quality. Silence, oh my so. God, yeah, it's just brilliant, you know, and yeah. Yeah, I think that was a, almost like a, a common thing that people didn't realize it was Stephen King when it came out, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, the hardcores know and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, for general public, it was a little bit shocking. And I mean, like that's, to yeah. me, that's my favorite uh, out, of, yeah. out of them it's, all. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just got so yeah. much heart and emotion in it. and. Yeah, I, yeah, it's great. Right on. I have a couple of funny comments coming to us from, <laughs> from YouTube. Note to self, if a stranger calls you Norma and hands you flowers, take the flowers. But then if someone said back, they're like, fuck that, run, if the Norma flowers issue happens. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> That is amazing. I love that everyone's having fun on uh, YouTube and chatting together yeah, right totally. now. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Like the how how interactive and and organic it is actually doing these these virtual festivals, right? So it is. It's and been so great. I yeah. enjoyed every second of this, and the films are so yeah so great. And you know the the filmmakers all have such heart. And yeah. I'm really glad that yeah, that Stephen Alan. King allowed this to, to oh happen. God, Absolutely. I think it's something that was a long time coming, I think. And, um, you know, I, I understand the need to be able to protect, you know, the copyright and, and intellectual property aspect of it. I totally understand that. But um, 
you know, I, I do think that there's also a level of respect from the people that make these things that are like, no, I can only play them either at a festival or at a sanctioned event. And that's it. You know, you're not going to be able to see it anywhere else. And I, I hope that Stephen King will um, allow something like this to happen, you know, maybe like once a year or every two years on a regular basis. That would basis. be amazing. Yeah, because I, I think it's also a nice big push for budding filmmakers to go, you know, let's, I want to take one of those films and, you know, put my own slant on it. And um, yeah, it's our crazy dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's not Cujo. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it's great. I, it's just, it's that kind of thing, I think, no. that, you know, that th that the industry really needs. I think people are, I mean, I'm sick of, of the nonstop. <laughs> I'm sick of the nonstop uh, superhero films, even though I love them. Yeah. And the regurgitating of the same thing over and over. And... You know, I'd like to see more films made from like, some of these th lesser-known Stephen King film uh, stories that, you know, require more than just a bunch of visual effects and, you know, people flying through the air and, and, and big fights. And I think that that's the big thing with his, his writing is that it, it doesn't rely on that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it really is very, you know, it, it's not... Um, visual effects laden writing it's you know even when you go back to to movies like the shining and stuff like that um even though there was you know that was added you know that was created in there but you can make those movies without having all this over the top visual effects and i think that that's that's the great thing about it for sure mm -hmm. for sure you know and i think it's like we've talked about it a little bit over the uh, the course of the festival so far i mean the fact that anyone potentially can can make one of these these uh, adapt one of these sh short stories is is pretty remarkable because it's people of all skill levels uh you know yeah. all backgrounds it is very much a universal thing so the fact yeah. that he's actually allowing us to open it up and and you know draw a bunch of eyes to these projects is pretty profound yeah and, so. and really you're only limited by your own imagination in these things because our budget literally was like 500 bucks yeah that's it Wow. I wish that's all we spent. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, guys, you guys will have to tune in tomorrow for the doctor's case. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I do think, I think that, but that's the thing. It's just like you have all these levels of production that you can go to. And still, even if you don't have, even if you have hardly any money to spend, if it's just basically food for the crew, because you're starting with such a great roadmap, you can make a good movie. Yeah. And you honestly, know? it's uh, it's pretty easy to call in favors when you're making a Stephen King movie. Yes, it, actually, it really yeah. truly is. That's that was our experience. Uh, Phil Adrisi, who's, uh, you know, he was the other cop. Um, all I did was, you know, we asked him. We, we got to know him here in LA in the writers group. You know, he's been on a lot of TV shows. Um, we called in Sam, who had been in something else before. Our Sam Lee, yeah. our lead actor, who's he's actually in a recording role right now, and Pam and uh, Tommy, Tommy, the Tommy Lee thing. Um, Guy Pico, like all these people, we tell them, you know, we're doing the Stephen King. Oh yeah, great, yeah, I'll be there, you know. And it's yeah, it's, it's wonderful. yeah, it's awesome. Sure. Cool. Uh, we're gonna be wrapping here in a few minutes. So, um, where can people find you? Um, well, I don't really have a huge online presence. It's basically market. Well, no, I do. I have a Vimeo page. But yes. I'd like to give you the name of it, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Look, why don't you email it to us and then I'll I go will. and I'll put the tweet up for you and yes. say if you want to see more from our. Actually, if you look for Hench Productions, which is in the title of the film, so it's H E N C H Productions, uh, you can find it. Sounds but good. But I will, I will email you. I'll email you the. Um, Info. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Oh Thank my you. God. Thank you. This is so great. Yeah, Thanks. it is. It's awesome. Take right care. On. Have a great night. <laughs> See you guys. Bye Take bye. care of those dogs. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Before they eat us. <laughs> <laughs> All right.